pmnation.com. All Natural Being. Warning, All Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to All Natural Being. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Before we get into it, I want to take the time to, again, welcome you to the number one inspirational show in the world as of this morning. Well, maybe not the world, (laughs) right? At least here on IPM Nation. So I want to thank you truly for stopping by, making us, after all these months now, since its debut, the number one show. And I believe it's number one for two reasons. One, because I'm passionately dedicated, wholeheartedly committed to you. I really do. I know you find this hard to believe, but I really do. Start my day and my night thinking about you. Well, us, really. You, me, and the people that surround us in our lives. Now, as you know, I'm not at all interested, nor should you be, in the watered down, the inauthentic, the apathetic, herd-approved version of you. Well, I don't know. I got a really cool membership card to carry in my wallet. Or, oh, well, I got one for my purse, too, you know, so I'm all over being a part of the herd. Look, I get a discount for coffee. If I'm a cop, I get a donut with it. You're a force of nature. <laughs> Why do we continue to live a farce of a life? So we're focusing this morning, as we do every morning here on IPM Nation, 11 a.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern for the rebroadcast. We're going to focus on the real you, the true you, the 100% certified organic. Who's doing the certification? I am. You are. Every time we look in the mirror. We're talking about the all-natural you at your core, the intrinsic perfection that is you, just waiting to be unleashed, untethered, unchained, unveiled. Let it to the light of day. Waiting for its time in the sun. Another bit of warning right up front. And I think why I want to do this coming out of the weekend, a little bit of warning. Is it me, we're up huge over the weekend on Facebook, I'm huge over at All Natural Being. As I say all the time, if you want to reach out, hit me up, allnaturalbeing.com. Send me an email, I'll send you one back. We're up huge this weekend in terms of uh, people stopping by and signing up and, and becoming friends and, 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 and hangout partners. On Facebook, but what is always fascinating to me is my friends, even family members, that absolutely hate the show, that refuse to even come over to the All Natural Being page. Don't even. Oh, I'm afraid it might pop up in my history. I got, I got family members on front of me, left and right. So I say all this time. Look, even in the warning of the show, this show may not be for you, because. I am not a member of the mindfulness cabal, the higher consciousness cartel. And do you know why? Because I think your consciousness is perfect as it is already. Got a few little things in the way of it, but your consciousness, there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, I need a higher consciousness. Well, you don't. You need less crap, which is why for the anaerobic aphorism over the weekend, I said, you want the key, the only meaning in life worth pursuing, the winning formula? Go in, cut the crap, and get your grade out. Nothing wrong with your consciousness. Oh, would you like to live a limitless life? No. Oh, well, would you like to be enlightened? No. I'm put here in the garden of the mortals to give my best run at this labyrinth. So what the hell? Everyone's like, oh, I've got this life, but now I'd like to be enlightened. I'd like to move on to the next realm. (laughs) Oh, yes, I'd like some wigs, please. Your wings are coming soon enough. I wouldn't worry about it. If you're listening to this like me, you're working on your final words. You're circling the drain. Your time's almost up here in the garden of the mortals, the labyrinth of life. So all these self-help, all the, the cult, I'd like to manifest myself into a higher being. What's wrong with the being you already are? <laughs> 
you got to laugh. You know, I'm going to reframe my weekends. You know what I've decided to call my weekends? Because on the weekends, you, 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 you tend to spend a little more time out and about, you know, for, for whatever reason. But you know what I've decided to reframe my weekends is? My weekends is a chance to identify certain types of people that if there are aliens and they really do alien abductions, ah, these are the people that I would vomit. Uh, vomit. <laughs> I can't even get it out. These are the people that I would nominate for the next UFO out of here. You know, the the motivational industrial complex, the self-help posse. They're sick of fans. The Enlightenment Entourage, a big b- big fan of, of that big business, big, 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 big business. You know who you are. You know who they are. See them everywhere, spreading... Busy peddling. Oh, I have some more self-help industry tactics. Look at how shiny these wooden nickels are. Pushing. Look, you have some type of attitudinal sickness with one breath, and they're dealing with their associated uh, snake oils. Ooh, 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 look at these vials of crap. Please step up. Oh, buy two, get one free. Selling one fairy tale, one Pollyanna plan. Oh, Oh, I've got some shenanigans. Just do this, then you'll be able to reconnect with your spiritual self, your higher, yeah, your higher self. So on this show, we're not going to find any fake motivation or inauthentic inspiration. Because we only need motivation if we forget, if we ignore who we ultimately are. Once you you embrace who you really are, that's all the inspiration you need. Once you remember to be impatient, Impeccably human. There's nothing wrong with being a human being. Where did we get such a bad rap? Yeah, we got a little amnesia. We got a handful of blind spots. Why is everyone so busy? They get to this life, then they want to be enlightened out of it. They want to be higher leveled out of it. They want to be conscious out of it. I want to control my mind. I want to still it. Oh, please, where do the UFOs land? Those intrigued by their life's personal adventure, they never need external instigation. You say, oh, oh, that's a cattle prod? Let me tell you, it says, see, it says cattle. It's for cattle. But those that channel their all-natural being find themselves, they don't need to outsource their enthusiasm. They, are, they find themselves with tons of it, boatloads of enthusiasm. Right? Everybody, oh, please. Take me out of this world. Take me out of this life. Make me something. Oh, please. Because if you're hoping for a carrot on the end of the stick, if you're in need of one of those, I've said this (laughs) from the very beginning, one of those overly caffeinated mototainment experts promising you the world to answer. Oh, to all my prayers. Oh, she just... So insightful. Prancing around on stage with the hand clapping gymnastics of a go dog dancer. Oh, no. oh, oh, like the village people. That would be another good one. All the bells and whistles and flashing lights of a Las Vegas slap machine. Uh, oh, I should remember. 331 684 7685. 331 684 Soul. Go ahead. Join the chorus. People, did the, someone just asked, Did you really? Uh, would suggest that uh, that there, you know of groups that should be um, uh, 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 abducted by aliens. Why, yes, I do. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you believe that kind of stuff. In any event, if you're looking for a mototainment expert, that's not what we're all about here. You want to be entertained? Take in a Broadway show. Go to the movies. You, uh, you got to have a Netflix account by this day and age. Or at 11 a.m. Look, your local news, if you're in the East, I don't know what you we would watch at 10, maybe a, a rerun of something. Well, there's got to be something on TV. Uh, <laughs> there's got to be something <laughs> you can watch on TV. You're not going to have any fun here. Let's just admit, admit. Because people challenging themselves. The people that say, yes, you know what? I think I'm great already. I have my own natural being. Why, why, why do I need all this craziness? All this mashugana. Because they realize the key, the one and only key to personal happiness, let it out. Spiritual fulfillment, well, 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 well let that out. Professional success, well, you gotta, re- you got to let that out. The key is to recall, revive, and release your inner superhuman, your inner metahuman, your all-natural being. Because when you do that, 
you're like, wow, I co- you mean I come pre-wired with this all these natural resources? They're like hardwired in me? Yeah. So I should really congratulate you for being a person of action, of all natural action. And that's why it's such an honor to hang out with you each and every day. Well, five days a week. Or whenever you, if you check us out on iTunes or ever else it come about. It's, it's always an honor. Because you're a part of a very rare breed. A true 1% of human cognition. Superhumans, metahumans. It is an elite group to belong to. For those of us hell-bent, literally, on channeling our all-natural being, rare, rare breed, and it's an honor to get a chance to hang out with you. And again, I realize this show isn't going to be for everyone, which makes it even more special. One formula, only one, go in. Cut the crap. Get your grade out. Because, can I give you my uh, opinion? (laughs) Sure. Sure, Brian. (laughs) Why not? It's not like you're taking any callers right now, so why don't you just go ahead and ramble on. My sense is that if you're unhappy, unfulfilled, unsuccessful, you feel unloved, uh, you're lying to yourself. You're a liar. So why don't we just all get up, stand up right now, walk into the closest mirror and go, yeah, you know what? I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I'm not telling the truth. I'm a poser. I'm a fake. I'm a liar. Oh, Brian, that is so harsh. Well, if you're unhappy, you're lying to yourself about who you really are. So go in, cut out the crap. It's like unhappiness, unfulfillment, being unsuccessful, the blind spots, the amnesia, all the rest of it. It's like a kudzu vine. It's an invasive species that gets in, starts to to just like wrangle its fingers, its vines, digs its roots. As far as it can get, it can never get to the all-natural being. All-natural being sitting there going, huh, look at those roots. <laughs> never going to touch me. Nice try, though. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's just perfect. Come on, Ed, boys. Come on, Ed. Your all-natural being's not worried about it, but you and I can go in. We can cut out those kudzu vines, those invasive species. Asian carp. What is it? The zebra mussels or another one where all this crap is imported. What does it do? It works Instantly, to kind of choke off whatever the natural stuff is. But the cool thing for you and I is that it can't touch our all-natural being. So once we commit to go in and get some of these zebra muscles, <laughs> blind spots, these blind spot zebra muscles out of us, once we go in and we, and we attempt to eradicate some of these negative attitudes that we have, the negative Asian carp swimming around in our minds, once we go in and get rid of the kudzu vines, that is the when you talk about Maya, um, you know, from uh, the Hindu faith. Maya, the illusion, and the Buddhist, Maya, the illusion. That's the kudzu vine. That's what blocks you from seeing reality. Let's go in, cut that, get it out of there, and get our grade out. So that's why I wanted to put up right away to kick off our week the number one, the only, really, winning formula in life and it is so simple that we overlook it all the time there's nothing to get there's a ton of stuff to get rid of the invasive species that move like every invasive species does it moves to get in and automatically compete for everything we have going on. It wants our soil. It wants our sunlight. It wants our sense of self. If you're unhappy, you got yourself a hostage situation. So it really is an honor. I am thrilled to be your tag team partner, to be your ride along, to be your shotgun, to be the person that you can hang out with. So we can go in and do some hacking away at those vines. Get rid of the stuff. Because there's there's nothing to get. Again, everything to get rid of. And that's why I say it's truly an honor. Because this is a life's calling. And people ask all the time, Oh, Brian, what's your calling? My only calling is to be called. And every day I'm called to do the same thing. It's like Bill Murray and... uh, Oh, it's so easy to say Caddyshack whenever you say Bill Murray or Stripes. But was it Groundhog Day? Over and over and over again. Well, that's what I'm living all this time. 
I'm going to make sure I bring my back scratcher with me when I come in here. That's what I, every morning I get up and go, okay, how can I go in and get out some more kudzu vines? How can I do it? How can I help? What can I do? How can I be a good partner, a good friend? And as I say every day, I'm not a psychiatrist, a licensed clinical, social, anything. I'm not any of those things. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a proctologist, a podiatrist. I'm not a whatever. Fill in, fill in the list. I'm barely, I'm not even a, people say, oh, you're a great life coach. I'm not a coach. I'm a, I'm a tag team partner. That's all I do. I, I got nothing to coach. Tag team partner. If you're looking at someone who goes, hey, how'd you get the kudzu out of, uh, kudzu out of your life? Well, that's just the thing about kudzu vines. You get in, you're right. They're like dandelions in your front yard. You get in, you pull them out, you, you know, you have a little barbecue, you get up Monday morning, and there's dandelions growing right back up in the spot. So for me, I get up every morning going, how do I get down to the root? How do I get down inside, all the way down, so that I'm sure there's no way these invasive species are going to take root and make it impossible to pull out? That's it. So I'm a, I'm a philosophical gardener. Oh, heaven help us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. A cognitive green thumb, I guess you could say. But it truly is an honor to kick off the week, as it's been the honor to kick off an hour whenever we're together, to, to find a way of hacking your brain to gain its ultimate advantage. And that's what I want to talk about. Because ultimately, that's what maturity is. Maturity is regaining the relationship with your all-natural being. And that's what we're going to focus on for the full hour. All right, let's do this. Let's jump real quick, take a quick break, very quick, and we'll be right back. IPMNation.com IPMNation.com, I forgot to ask. Yes, I'm just getting a text from a friend that says, Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I don't want to just throw everybody under the bus, but there are people that just are like, oh, you know, it's about uh, ascending to somewhere else. I like the descent. I like taking evolutionary leap back to who we already are. We're dropped in the garden of the mortals for a reason, and I don't want to tap out any sooner, any sooner, in any way, philosophically, spiritually, physically, tap out in any way. Oh, well, if you just achieved a higher con- uh, consciousness, then if that's what I wanted, I'd be a Buddhist priest. I'd be running around in saffron robes. But that's not my gig, and I sense it's probably not your gig. That's what I say all the time. Meditation for the rest of us. Elite Mindfulness, the program that I wrote, is it's meditation for the rest of us. All the benefits, none of the BS. None of the BS. So thank you very much for that. Also, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> 331-684-7685-331-684-SOUL, S-O-U-L. I'm in a pretty good mood today. I find myself to be in a pretty good mood most days. But now let's get to it. Some of the things that I wanted to talk about this morning that I thought, you know what, if we could kick off our week with an attitude adjustment, if we could kick off our week with with a different, what we, we, what we've said before that these are thought experiments, right? We're going to go all Einstein on each other. But that's what we do when we're part of the team. That's what we do when we're in the all-natural being club. There is such a thing. Well, there is here. If you're listening to the show, there is. You want to be true to who you are. But let's be honest. Who we are is in a constant transition. We don't have a fixed, static, etched-in-stone self. You know that at your core, you're the definition of dynamic. You're constantly changing, constantly moving, constantly adapting to your surroundings. And when you look at this quarter-life crisis, the mid-life crisis, the end-of-life crisis, everyone's running around in a crisis, good Lord. The identity crisis at any age begins when we take our natural flexibility, our natural suppleness, our ability to handle anything fate throws at us, and we try to fix that. We try to package that. We try to, you know, pat them into little cakes. We take ourselves and try to make 
marble statues. Just got a text. The only constant is change. Absolutely right. That's what we're saying. Oh, I'd like to still my mind. (laughs) Oh, don't worry. Mother Nature. Fate is working to still your mind. (laughs) It'll happen one day soon enough. But that's what happens. That's when we get these identity crises. Whatever age you're getting them. So I started to work on this pretty heavy duty over the weekend. And here's what I've come up with. Within our own sense of being, we have the ego, which you know, as I believe, is the estrangement gone overboard. You're estranged from the field, the wave, the Holy Spirit, whether you spell it H-O-L-L-Y or W-H-O-L-L-Y, right? Religion or science, doesn't matter to me, should matter to you, doesn't matter to me in the least. Whatever you believe, however you define your divine, that's your business. But when your sense of self becomes estranged from that wave, however you spell that word, when your sense of self becomes estranged, when, the, when your estrangement goes overboard, there you got your ego. Now, what we forget is that our mind isn't compartmentalized. If change is the only constant, and I believe that to be the case, if change is the only constant, then we have to admit that our mind is an ecosystem. It's not just what's included in our skull. It's not just what runs down our spine. It's not just those things that we have, all the different information coming in from all of our senses. So our mind is an ecosystem. So it's the difference between ego, estrangement from the field, and an ecosystem. Consciousness versus the confluence of your surroundings. And truly, if we look at it that way, maturity is the regaining of your all-natural being. And people go, okay, great, what's your all-natural being? Well, there's a little bit of balance. For the people that want the higher selves that are ready to do away with the ego, well, we're here in the garden of the mortals. We need a little bit of that ego. We need a little bit of that vestigial, that leftover remnant of when we were younger. Yes, there reaches a time in our our lives that in order to mature, in order to ripen, in order to evolve, in order to, you know, our coming out party, in order to become adults, we need to mature. And that maturity is the balance between our ego and the ecosystem. Because what neuroscience tells us is that you are the game. You are the labyrinth. There is no distinction between you and the garden of the mortal. You are that dirt. Divinely inspired, however you define it. Divinely infused dirt makes up your DNA. So the all-natural balance is networking our minds with the sublime of the moment at hand. That's the balance. That's all-natural being. Can we totally do away with ego? No. Why would we want to? Because there's not a person listening, unless you're willing to admit that you're going to go back in the mirror and say that you're a liar all over again, that life is all about virtues and none of the vices, or the inverse. None is a, life isn't about all of the vices and none of the virtues. It's the difference between the ego and the ecosystem. And maturity is when we regain that all-natural balance. When we recognize that, that our minds and our surroundings, our labyrinth, it's all us. We are that game. We're one big networking party going on. So what do you do with that information? What do you do with the moment in hand? You've heard me say before that my definition of life, it's, it's improv art. It's street art. It's, it's improvisational art. Calling on courage to be open in the first place. Clarity to see what's being presented to you once you are open. And then near constant, constant, dynamic, recreativity. And that's why I say all the time, people say, well, my sense of self, I am a this, I am a that. Well, wait 20 seconds. What are you going to be then? You're going to be something different if you're open, if you have attention to what's going on around you. We know now that all that matter is 
all that particles are or a part of the wave that have condensed the collapse of the wave function that have kind of solidified somewhat, but you're still a part of that wave, whatever that wave is, which is really cool because that means your natural resources, they're myriad and they really are unlimited. You can sense, you can feel, you can learn, you can, you can detect. So the labyrinth of life, the great run, the garden of the mortals that so many of the self-help industry tactics want you to get away from. Why do they want you to get away from it? Well, because they go, oh, well, life has to be painful. Don't you want a higher consciousness? No. Oh, don't you want to be enlightened? That'll happen soon enough, needle nits. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you're going back to the light. As I said in the opening, we're all busy writing our last words. We're all busy circling the drain. So, to, so instead of just tapping into that natural happiness, they automatically throw humans under the bus, self-help industry tactics, the higher cartel, conscious, higher consciousness cartel, motivational mafia, the enlightenment entourage. They throw humans on the bus because, oh, it's so sucky being a human being. Clearly you want to elevate up to over here. And then the, then the one thing they absolutely guarantee they're going to be able to rid you of, the ego goes, well, I'm special. I deserve to be enlightened. I deserve to be a higher consciousness. I deserve to be a this or a that. They got you hooked. The game of life guarantees one run at it. And a few billion rabbit holes are waiting for your personal spelunking, your personal plumbing, your personal adventure and exploration. In the realm of the impromptu that you and I live in, it's a realm of instant itineraries. But we get so caught up in, oh, I want a higher consciousness. I want to, I want to be able to levitate. I want a quantum leap. I want a limitless life. You can't handle the life you have. People run around going, well, wouldn't you want a limitless application of what you got? People say, oh, well, you know, you have to focus on reality. Oh, really? Well, what is that reality? Everyone wants to solidify their reality. We can't even figure out what reality is. The sharpest minds in the history of the planet can't tell you what's real. But you can when you tap into your all-natural being. So instead of just embracing the impromptu realm of instant itineraries, we fall for the carrot on the end of the stick. We need an aid. We need some crutches. Navigational aid. So we go from one goal to the next. We try to manipulate fate. We try to engineer. Engineer, what a word. We try to engineer a favorable outcome for ourselves. I call it the egotiations of the mind. But then the rat race routine, it just deepens our alienation. And deepens probably isn't the best word. It just solidifies. I like the word solidifies better there. Excuse me. Let's edit that word out if this ever makes it to tape. Well, I like It solidifies our alienation. We're no longer the ecosystem that is our mind and our spine and our senses and our labyrinth, the garden of the mortals. Everyone wants to check out. Okay, wait for the flag saucer. Stay out here in the field. Don't just right over there by the crop circle. They'll be back. Right? Wrapped in the tedium of our to-do lists. Trapped in the drudgery of mechanically pursuing the carrot at the end of the stick and a whole host of other wooden nickels. Life becomes a preparation and no presence. Always getting, always going, always doing, no being, all natural being. Which means investigating the invitation at hand, the fine-grained details of the fingerprints of provenance. Because it's my estimation that the only beacon that truly matters is the one beneath your feet. Cracking the code, discovering the curriculum of this particular moment at hand. This minute, packed with magic and mysteriousness. Because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. We don't know. 
But that's the beauty of it. Life's formula is deciphered one fleeting occurrence at a time. So life is about the art of seeing, the art of sensing, the art of hearing and feeling and smelling and tasting. It's about life. It's about paying attention, hypersensitive to this particular moment in all of time. It's about the decisions in this moment, not some down-the-road destinations. I remember listening to a speech, Steve Jobs, while he was still alive. He was given a commencement speech somewhere. I forget where it was. He said that your time is limited. He said you don't want to waste it living someone else's life. And I agree. Your time is limited. limited. And he was right. We're all working towards our last words. Yet if you live your life one goal to the next, by the time you reach your little cherished pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, you're someone else. So you've spent your days waiting to dovetail to technically a stranger's desires. Because the person that, that you now is not going to be the same person a week, a year, a month, a decade, a lifetime from now. That's no longer you. So stress comes when we don't have the all-natural balance between the ego and eco. Between the ecosystem and the negotiations of our own minds. So instead of being pulled by a goal, what if we're just pushed by our own personal grit? What if we're just we're just inspired? We don't have to be motivated. Over here, hello, hello, hello. Here's something shiny. Cool, yes. Oh, here's a mandala. If you just walk this mandala, you'll have higher consciousness. So the goal of becoming enlightened, the goal of becoming, uh, gaining a higher consciousness, do all this practice. Why are you doing this practice? Well, one day I'd like to be enlightened. One day I'd like to know the truth behind it all. Or some other cocoon, some other bubble wrap. Anything you can do to keep you from tapping into the unimaginable power that you possess right now. To keep you from tapping into the myriad natural resources that are in there, right? That came with you. It's like the old spaghetti sauce. It's in there. It's in there. Remember that commercial? College kid comes home. I think it's this grandmother making the spaghetti sauce. Oh, did you put in the onions? Did you put in the garlic? Did you put in this and that? She's like, it's in there. It's in there. Same with you. But yet, and these are the people that don't dig this show. God love you. Godspeed. The people that that are not going to listen to all natural being. Why? Because they're into the slavish conformity to the will of the stick and the carrot. They don't mind being tethered. They don't mind being shackled. They don't mind being cognitive couch potatoes. Heaven forbid they tap into what they have right now in this moment to remember who they ultimately are. Now, It's easier just to adopt the debilitating aspects of somewhere else to be. Desperately looking for a concrete footpath in a sea of chaos. Reading a really interesting book this weekend. And and one like Grammy goes, goals are for losers. Uh, The particular author, uh, uh, the guy who writes the Gilbert cartoons, I think it's Adams is his last name. He says, it's all about the systems. Goals are for losers. Well, what I loved and what I took right away and having read, I I think a couple of his books I read this weekend. Um, God's Debris, I think, was the title of another one. But in any event, I I like this concept of you're pushed by your grit. Your system has its own grit. You're run through the labyrinth as a system. You're not pulled by some goal. You're not subject. Again, to the the, 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 the debilitating mindset of somewhere else to be. So when we talk about mental hygiene, if we talk about mental hygiene, how about just right now, for the next 20 minutes, what if this were right? What if I'm right? I wouldn't say throw the baby out with the bathwater. I wouldn't say go cold turkey. I wouldn't say go all in. I'm just saying if your entire day is wrapped 
in this mindset of a goal. Give yourself 20 minutes. Just see if I'm not right. Try it out. The philosopher Krishnamurti said that inattention is negation. Well, if you don't pay attention to your all-natural being, you're negating it. So all I'm asking is for 20 minutes, one seventy second of a day, to be your own best friend, to be your biggest fan, to get off your own back, get in, cut it out, and get your great back out. Grab the kudzu vines, as Beethoven may have thought of calling it fate, when he says, I'll grab fate by the throat. I love that line. What if you and I go in, grab our kudzu vines by the roots, and rip them right out? What do we have? All natural being. You'll find that's the dirt, that's the soil. Which is why I think I'm so, I get, when I look at it, I go, eh. This whole thing about political correctness. Plasticity, being flexible, being all natural. Doesn't mean we're perforated. But so many of us have been cocooned and coddled since birth. Our skin's never been given the opportunity to reach its natural thickness. And today you look around, there's no empathy, there's no understanding. There's no compassion. Why? Because political correctness, it knows. It's It's a great solvent. Political correctness attacks the epidermis of all of us. Our skin never gets to regain its natural thickness. So everyone's offended, everyone's ticked off, everyone's hurt, everyone's a pincushion. Just go online. But for you and me, the kindred, the rare breed, when we tap into our all-natural being, eh, eh, the storm's going on outside, we're good. Everything's groovy in here, not to worry. And it reminds me, another thing you hear, especially on the weekends. Everyone's busy talking about sin. But if you look up the root word in Greek of sin, do you know that one of the meanings is to miss its mark? It's like if you were throwing a dart and you didn't hit the dartboard, that would be a sin, to miss the mark. To not hit the aim in life. Well then if that's the case, if that's the real root of the word sin, then sin means to be dropped in the labyrinth of life. Sin means to be dropped in the garden of the mortals and not hit your mark. And that's why I love the concept of inner orienteering. Now you're going to go, well, oh, Brian, of course you like it. You, you, you wrote it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But suppose I didn't write it. And you're welcome to it. You know, there's an article about plagiarism. Ah, it's yours. Take it. Inner orienteering. Right? Tell everyone about it. Tell all your friends. Inner orienteering. Because not missing our mark is the same thing as it's finding our total well-being by navigating the very narrative in our minds that's holding us down and back. It's negotiating the barriers and the distractions and the, and the pins that people push in, that fate throws in our way. Missing the mark is to not go into the cubby holes, the crawl spaces, the dark recesses, the backwaters of our minds. And root out the weeds that are blocking us from being who we truly are. And the ego is a magnet. Instead of recognizing, instead of looking back, instead of the evolutionary leap back to the wave where it's connected to everything and it knows it doesn't need anything, it keeps its eye on the carrot on the end of the stick. I am an ego. And it attra- it's a magnet. That's what it does. It's the difference between the authentic you, which is, which is a, 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 a fragment of the ecosystem of which your mind detects, pays attention to what's going on around it. It's the difference between that authenticity and addictive needs. The ego, it needs, it needs, it needs. And if it just stopped in its pursuit of a goal long enough and turn around and look behind, if it had that evolutionary leap back to who it already is, you go... Well, what was I busy looking for entourage? I'm part of the wave. I'm, I'm, I'm part of the field. 
Everything I ever wanted, everything I ever needed, is already right here. But no, let's keep being estrangement gone overboard times two, 2.0, 3.0. Let's have a higher consciousness. I wish we had a lower consciousness. Because if higher consciousness is responsible for what's happened in the world today, I'm nominating some more people for the next supersized UFO to land in a cornfield here in the Midwest. People go, oh, Brad, that's just so horrible. Why is it horrible? They want out of this world. They want out of the garden of, uh, uh, of the mortals. They want out of the personal responsibility to run the labyrinth of life, to go in and get their grade out. So uh, guess what? T- step up. Watch your head. They're told the grades are a little shorter than we are. The ego, that's what it does. All types of entourage. In an attempt to feel inflated. So how great would it be? Well, I was special enough to be abducted by aliens. <laughs> All because it's forgotten the very wave that it's estranged from. So much doing. So little being. And that's why I love hanging out with you all five days a week. Because you and I aren't like that. That's why I get to say, do you see now why I get to call you a rare breed? Why I get to call you an elite? Why I get to think of you as the cognitive 1%? It's not because I... (laughs) I have family members and other people going, no way, I'm liking that page. Are you kidding me? What if anyone ever swoops in and says, oh, you follow this one? <laughs> you, you're into all natural being? Mayday, mayday. Woo, 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 woo. Red alert, red alert. What was it from Lost in Space? The robot used to say, danger, Will Robinson. This show isn't going to be for everybody. It's not intended to be for everybody because all natural being, although it sits at the core of all of us, not everyone's going to grip it. People love the smell of kudzu, I'm assuming. Don't know what it smells like, (laughs) but you get where I'm going with this. We'll be right back. You're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. How much longer will you let them hijack your head and your heart? How much longer will we let them hijack our heads and our hearts? Because ultimately, don't forget, we're a co-conspirator. If it happens, it's on you and me. And it's a great gig taking full responsibility, I think. Absolutely fantastic gig. All right, I'm supposed to mention 331-684-7685, 331-684-SOUL. Working busy this week, uh, like Santa Claus, checking his li- making a list and checking it twice, going to find out how these computers work, the audio things and everything else we're adding. So uh, we're getting ready uh, closer and closer every day with the video application, all kinds of other cool things uh, that we're dialing in. Because ultimately, you know what I would like to be? I'd like to be our own, I don't want to say TV because we're not really tele, although it's teleporting a vision, television, I guess we could say that, right? If you're finding a way to transport a vision, you could say we're television. I want to be a vi- our own video station where people go, oh, I want to tune in, see what's going on with the kindred over at All Natural Being, metahumans, superhumans, all natural beings. Those of us, uh, what is that? Homo ingenious, I like to call it. Homo ingenious, which makes me think all the time, you hear these people say, oh, wow, you know, thousands of years ago, they weren't as evolved as we were. How do you know? Pretty sharp people running around back there if they knew about the ultimate connection already. Pretty, 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 pretty sharp people. All right, let's get to a couple different things here. Uh, this one from New York Magazine, because, of course, you know me, I've rambled on, and now we only have a quarter of the show left. But I wanted to do this. This is from The Science of Us. Let me also thank New York Magazine, one of the few websites that doesn't start playing video right away uh, when you load it up. But I want to thank them for that and also to let you know that Melissa Dahl, D-A-H-L, Dahl, Dahl. I'm not calling her a doll like a D. What would it be? D-O-L-L. I'm not mansplaining. You know, just want to say it right up front. Got to be careful. Everything you say anymore. All right. Melissa Dahl. Doll. And by the way, I don't believe in a moment you have to be careful about everything you say. I just like making fun of people with thin skin. Because you know what? Making fun is caring. That's it. Making fun of them is loving. Because sooner or later, when we get our natural thick skin back, life becomes great. You don't have to worry. 
You run around like a crazy person. It's a great gig, and you don't care what other people think. I say the next time you're on a public bus, stand up and sing Walking on Sunshine by Katrina and the Waves. <laughs> yeah, that's that sound. Or oh, 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 pick your favorite song. What could a favorite song be? I'm binging, uh, oh, let me paraphrase, uh, Justin Timberlake. Uh, I'm bringing uh, 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 Crazy back. See? Now there's a song. Say, I'm bringing Crazy back. And then when you realize, yeah, you know what? I'm still alive. They may have stared at me. They may have laughed. They may have pointed. They may have moved to the front of the bus. But it didn't kill me. So bringing Crazy back, growing my thick skin from the inside out, not a bad way to go. But in any event, I digress. Science of Us, Melissa Dahl, says you're not supposed to be happy all the time. And you think every, we think people would know that. And they talk about it in this particular study. Uh, there's a term in psychology. I don't know if you've heard it before, but it, it, it addresses the, the thought of how the thrill of winning something eventually wears off that we have a baseline and once we get the promotion once we get the win once we achieve whatever our carrot is at the end of the end of the stick that we become attuned to it and then we're like eh you know i'm really not all that happy anymore and people go what how could you not be happy you won the lottery But there's this baseline that we return to. We become habituated to the sense. And then we go, eh, you know what? The term's hedonic, hedonists, yes? Hedonic adaptation. We're having such a blast, the blast no longer sparks us. So we've been searching after it for so long that we finally get it. We're like, all right, next carrot, next stick, let's go. I'm ready. Check, please. I've, have you ever done that before? I know I have. Three three one six eight four seven six eight five three three one six eight four soul. We thank everyone for the text this morning. Yes, it is very nice to be back. Thank you. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. You know exactly who I'm talking to. Thinking of you very much. Thank you. As I'm thinking of you, as I think of everyone here on the show. So let's say that she's right, which she is. If there is this hedonic adaptation then what's wrong with a few sour moments every so often you don't want to run around like oh i'm happy 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 oh, happy 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 does that know what life's about not here in the garden of the mortals not here in the labyrinth of life another great thing i read this weekend someone was talking about oh how some of his biggest failures the biggest failures that they had in life they met some of the coolest people and in subsequent adventures entrepreneurial physical athletic spiritual some of their subsequent wins were with people that they had met when they were losing so we don't always have to be happy it's it's not the death of us to be glum not if we confront it not if we go hmm not try to escape it but let me see why would i be sad today wait for the answer to come let it have its voice for a minute or two and then throw in a 20 second victory or a 20 minute victory see is there any evidence that i can use to further freeing to further unfettering unchaining untying my all natural being or is it just more bat crap craziness (laughs) i don't know why i was sad in the first place leave it alongside of the road According to the article, quote, happiness isn't meant to last. Recognizing that happiness exists and that it's a delightful visitor that never overstays its welcome may help us to appreciate it more when it arrives. According to this, one of the psychologists that was interviewed by Ms. Dahl, McAndrew is the guy's name, it seems, Frank McAndrew. And it reminded me of, of uh, Ben Franklin. Was it uh, house guests and fish 
all wear out their welcome after three days? Something like that. Well, maybe happiness should wear out its welcome after three days. Could be. Why not? And even if we use that as a visual experiment, as a thought experiment, even if we go, all right, every three days happiness is going to leave, how much cooler is it when happiness arrives a little later? Our challenges aren't supposed to make us sad. They're just clarion calls. They're just there to help us get better at what it is we're doing. Whatever it is, only you know. But that's the beauty of the labyrinth. I want to have higher consciousness so nothing ever bothers me again. I just hope they seat like 10,000 people. You know, like it's it's like a UFO that shows up the size of an aircraft carrier. (laughs) Right? What was wrong with being made a human? We got some lessons. We got some baggage. We got some bubble wrap that we picked up in our youth. And some of it we absolutely needed. Look, we'd be, if you were like me, we'd still be running around with scissors, playing in traffic, looking at power outlets, inspecting them with forks, right? We'd be doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You ever, when you were a little kid, shoot an arrow straight up in the air and then everyone scampers to see where the arrow's going to land? Well, I did that. So there are some things that we needed to learn early on to go, oh, you need to be bubble wrapped all right because we think you're insane. Jury's still out, except in my mind. That's why I say all the time, you can't spell Brian without the I an idiot. Very freeing. And I will tell you, getting on a bus and singing out loud like that, time of my life. (laughs) Absolute. (laughs) Absolute time of my life. Happiness isn't meant to stick around forever. That's not what's tasked us in the labyrinth of life. We take the good, the bad. What makes us ultimately happy is to stand next to fate and go, great, bring it. Bring it. Just bring it. Now, I want to jump into this article because it was somewhat. um, Let me see, make sure I have it. Oh, you know what? I didn't bring it over. All right. Well, it was an article that pertained to gifted people that are gifted, but people say are gifted children. And there was some argument. Well, is it IQ? Is it EQ? Is it this or that or all these other things? But one of the things that I really liked about it, and I'm bummed now that I can't bring it up for you. I'll get it for tomorrow's show. So let's leave that be. So just tomorrow, we'll talk about uh, this whole concept of gifted and what gifted means. So let's, uh, let's do that tomorrow. Before we get ready to run out today, here's another one we got. And I really liked uh, this one. Talks about, where are we? Over Mindful is the name of the magazine. And the article by Heather Herlock, Point of View, The Radical Act of Creating Space. Well, you and I have talked about this space before, the, the, the temporal terrain between you and the outside pin looking for a cushion. What is it? Best acronym. Breathe in. Exhale your name. Scan your situation. And then take action. So talk about this radical act of creating space, how to make room for silence and why we should. Now, you could take this a couple different ways, but for me, I like the idea of personal space. Oh, I just need to get some air. I need a little bit of personal space, yes? The person in the cubicle next to me is driving me bonkers. My neighbor upstairs, he walks across the floor one more time in those shoes. I'm telling you. Hello, aliens! I don't need one of those. That's what I should sell. You know what I do? Maybe you, maybe you and I, let's go in on this together. We'll sell UFO beacons. And we just, like a bat light from Batman. And then we'll use a little bit of the GPS technology. We can paint the person. Go, hello, alien. They don't want to be here anymore. Wink, wink, nod, nod, nudge, nudge. I'm just teasing. But we need a little bit of space. And that's the best acronym. So that when someone gets our goat, right, riles us up, then we got a little bit of space, a little temporal terrain that we can use so that we're not uh, busy buying into their mashugana. It's their mashugana, not ours. We didn't order it. Didn't come special order. It's not us. I 
think about it. That's the radical act of creating space because everyone wants us to respond right away. Oh, well, I don't want to appear dull-witted. I'm not talking about that. We're simply saying that when we cultivate the 20-second victory, when we cultivate the best acronym, I'm just getting a text, apparently my high, shrill voice. <laughs> Sorry, I, hope, I should watch the board. So let me try it one more time. Woo! Hello, aliens! That's my attempt at Ethel Merman. All silent night! Some of you are too young to remember that. All silent night! My parents used to play that in the house. That and Robert Goulet. Oh, did I ever tell you about the first time I got to uh, cuss? And I didn't get yelled at for it because when we were little uh, and I would uh, be Brian, <laughs> truth be told, um, and I got just slightly older that my mom would chase me around if I cussed or said something bad and she would try to wash my mouth out with soap. But as I got stronger and bigger, I could keep my lips and my teeth shut so she couldn't get much soap in. And you know what? You know what they did? They went ahead and invented squirt ivory soap. Try it sometime. Keep your lips pursed. It's impossible to keep someone from opening just a corner of your lips. And just try it as strong as you are and squirting in ivory liquid. Golly, she was crafty. So in any event, <laughs> the very first time, so another rabbit hole here, but then we're going to wrap it up, get ready to start our week. Another rabbit hole, I was able, when we talked about Ethel Merman, I was able to say the word hell in my house first time, no squirt ivory, uh, because of our good friend Robert Goulet. Now, I'm really dating myself, but if you remember Robert Goulet, if you're as old as my parents, and I was subject to it, because they had the only radio in the house, and they would play Robert Goulet, and he had a line where it said, to march into hell for a heavenly cause. Turned out to be the first song I ever sang in our house, out loud. I'd scream hell at the top of my lungs every time they played them. No more squirt ivory. That's how that worked. All right, <laughs> so there's, <laughs> there's some news you can use. How to get away with cussing and squirt ivory by just singing popular song taglines. All right, we're going to go ahead. Get ready to get out of here. Have an absolutely fantastic week, as always. And remember, just remember, take a mindful moment and remember who you ultimately are. Embrace the fact that we are a balance of ego and ecosystem. We, we don't need to still our minds. We don't need to kill our ego. We don't need to have a higher consciousness. We don't need to be limitless. We don't, we, we don't need to be those things. You and I are a healthy balance of ego and eco. We never say no to a twist and a turn, a left, a right, an up, a down, a pivot, a swerve. We never say no in the labyrinth of life. Because that's what it means. We're grateful to have been dropped in the garden of the mortals. So save all your ethereal, all your ephemeral. ephemeral. Wouldn't you like to be able to levitate? No. I'm, I'm doing pretty good being grounded. So again, I would ask, you want to take an evolutionary leap? Take it back to who you already are. Because when you get back down to who you are at your core, the fine-grained ingredients of who you truly are. When you get back down to that, life rises up and goes, she is on fire. He absolutely gets it. And when that happens, you're going to look around and go, that was almost like magic. It was just scary how that synchronicity, how the coincidence, how the epiphanies, the serendipities, all these things just started popping up in my life the moment I remembered who I already am. Wait till that happens. And you will never be on your own back ever again. I promise you. I know from experience. All right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. You've been listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Join us live every Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 a.m. Eastern. 
Also, check us out around the clock at allnaturalbeing.com. Until then, always remember to bring your own bold. Bring your own bold. Wouldn't that be a life? IPMNation.com. 